All right, guys, welcome back to The Existential Way. Kevin Meredith here. Gang stalking and the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, if you don't involve yourself into the spiritual war that's going on around us, you will definitely open yourself up to being a recipient of its resulting effects in your life. There's just no two ways around it at this point. If you can believe it, it's all already the middle of 2019. And in stepping back into the bigger picture to see the world that's been going on around me, um, I feel that I'm outside of space and time to this world. Like I'm here, a lot of us feel like we're here physically, which we are. But our spiritual source is in the eternal with God already. Now I say this just as a signpost to the direction that, uh, for which God wants his placement for us. Because it really is in his place and timing for our lives. And that's why I say you must involve yourself into uh, the end of this age and the spiritual war that's going on because it's crucial because you will, the, the effects will just be magnified if you try to ignore the spiritual war that's being run through this physical proxy. Your very vessels, you know, on a day to day feel the effects of it, whether you're uh, involved or not, it's just how much of God's protection do you want to receive from it? See, that's really the choice when we're talking about free will and why this, like for my sake, it's this, for my, not for my sake, but for my place, this remote neuromonitoring, monitoring, it feels like a magnetic gravitational force on top of my cerebral where it it's the wearing out of the saints it is the spiritual war being magnified through the the physical proxy of this satellite network surveillance system there's no escaping that for us, even for those who are trying to find relief in it. It seems like if you're trying to find relief in it, it just makes it worse. It's just, it, it's a, you're, you're allowing yourself, you're allowing for it to be magnified in your life at this point. Okay, and so... You know, I think at this point we're beyond all the talking points. We're beyond the apologetics. We're beyond the defensiveness. We're beyond the divisiveness. It's by God's doing that he's going to bring us together spiritually. And I've had this feeling the past few days of just... The reason we're scattered is because there has to be a certain number of people, gang stalkers, perps, around us equally. And it seems like we've been, with the, with the so-called TI community, we've been fighting this uphill battle to find common ground. And we've been, don't get me wrong, there are, there is a utilization for it in terms of finding general commonality to to why we what we've come to in terms of the traumatization of it but to to but to go beyond that would be like just to force drama beyond um, any any sense of personal growth you know and we have to keenly become aware of our surroundings if that's you know we always have to be uh, doing that as real ones. I was talking to a friend today who's been going through a hard time. She's um, knows about 
what it is to be a target at times, but she's not. From what Spirit has been telling me, not 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 fully involved into the ramifications of what happens when you avoid it, and you are a chosen one. You know, um, she's not a believer, but she still understands some biblical context. And specifically, a verse came to mind when, um, after I had spent some time with her today, um, you know, God is. Shortening the time for the sake, shortening the times for the sake of his elect. Now, why would God do this if we were all the same? If he didn't have a special election that he had promised to come out of this world, um, would the cards just fall to natural evolution as anything with the sign of life is to be diminished, and that which is of the hive mind? which is debased and reprobate, is that what should flourish for this world? See, and that's where the question arises, is when you avoid yourself in this process, it's not good, ultimately. And a lot of you real ones know that you can only avoid it for so long before you begin feeling the spiritual ramifications of um, not heeding God's warning for your life in real time, you know. It's not time to wait around anymore. It's not time to search for people who don't exist. It's not time to join yourself to uh, specific groups that aren't being used for, for God's best interest in mind for you personally. None of that. What we have is a, a full-scale spiritual war going on in the heart of this beast system, America, Babylon the Great, um, which is terrorizing the lives of, of basically all Americans into a, a state of submission to its deeper agenda. Now most have, have um, turned and are a part of that, but the few that are uh, standing upright in God, they're receiving of the suffering, the persecution, the examination of the agenda at hand, you know, and um, it's not my belief or expectation that my targeting will ever go away, first off because I run a personal ministry and so that's one thing. Um, do I believe God has the power to, to heavily diminish uh, the targeting for sure. It, it has in some areas diminished in my life or in other areas it seems to have found a, a a balance in becoming stronger in other areas. So it's the tactic of Satan to try to keep trying to identify weak points in your life. Um, but it, it's up to your free will to suffocate out those those lower spirits that continually try to test you through attacks. Um, that's the power that, that God has elicited through our very vessels and, and bringing his witness. And so I believe that God has a special election. And I believe that the times are, are, are shortened for the sake of his elect. I believe that. And unfortunately, um, that's the calling that we should be living out as a real so-called TI community. You know, and I, I prayed for this friend that the human spirit can be agitated by this program if you're not a believer. It can very much so succumb to a weakened state of existence where your head is on a swivel and you're very intimidated and you live in fear and you, um, you are trying to settle things in terms of just solely seeking relief from it. And I have human compassion for that. But I also have hope because the Holy Spirit can mitigate the attacks on your vessel, on my vessel. 
to allow the Holy Spirit to to be of to, to bear more fruit, to bear to bear a greater abundance of fruit, to allow one to uh, steadfastly carry one's cross through the crowd. You know, and so relationships are changing, personal ones. Um, there is a divide and conquer tactic being used by the enemy continually in life in general, but also heavily in this program. That linear form of patterning to get you to, to submit in some way. And here's the, here's what I was thinking yesterday, because I don't myself, when we're talking about being a believer or being a believing TI, I don't believe the lie of listening to lower spirits that are a part of this gang stalking program and their ideal or, or desire for us to change, to satisfy the, the behavior modification that this program is supposedly espousing on, on real TIs. I don't believe that for one minute. I believe we're going to have to define the difference between what change is and what conformity is. There's a huge difference. Change comes from within. It requires the act of God. It requires you to die to self daily so that God can make himself known in your life. Hence, you can have a relationship with him. The, the, some of the skewed definitions that the world puts out there are more like, they're so superficial, topical, and externalized that people actually believe that conformity is changed. No. Gang stalkers have conformed. Meaning, they have fallen in line to subservience to something that doesn't want them to have any signs of life. Okay. And so we are not here to it, the only conformity that we are to change by is to allow God to conform our lives within according to his will and his desires so that he gets all the glory. And that's antagonistic to uh, conformity to any dialectic. You know, A to B, and then the answer to B is A. And then the answer to A is go back to B. And then the answer to B is go back to A. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's, that's the conformity. Do away with the human spirit. And I see... With my friend, I, you know, I have such a heart for this one because she has such a good spirit, you know. But the spirit has been, the spirit can get derailed if, if the Holy, if it's not equipped by the Holy Spirit, okay. And um, human reason and logic, I believe, are an important real one tendency. But it's not the end all be all. The Holy Spirit to which God is sent is the end-all be-all to exact that change in one's life and to be able to be afforded a greater quality of life. And by that I mean a greater spiritual quality of life. You're going to come to these places where you're, you're going to get tired of asking the same questions that um, are not to be found in this world or by this world. They're to be lived out and existed in and stemming from another world as if to be in two places at once and what they fear the most the human spirit and the spirit of God the transformation of the Holy Spirit and that's why I say you must know yourself in this you can't build your personal outreach on a bunch of talking points because you can memorize scripture to a T. Because what that ultimately does is it ends up judging people that aren't worthy of that judgment just because they don't know what you know. But they have a testimony 
that it, that exists upon a, the greater foundation of the Holy Spirit in one's life and Jesus Christ. You know. And so, you know, you have to purpose this in your life. You have to know yourself in the process of all suffering and examination and receiving the power of God in your life, to making the choice and by free will purposing yourself to God and to everything that uh, He tells you to do in spirit and truth. He tells you to be of in spirit and truth. He tells you to witness to the, the, in spirit and truth. And your sorrows will become rejoice. Yeah, your sorrows might have traumatic residual according to the flesh accord of this world, but your rejoice will be uh, your awakening process to spiritual, being spiritually comforted and being spiritually regenerated by God. And so, yeah, I'm going to keep her in prayer because she understands that when you tell people things and they resonate in spirit with your spirit and the Holy Spirit is telling your spirit to tell her spirit, that's a powerful thing. She needed hope in a moment and I, and the spirit led me to give her some correct, some of, uh, uh, some correct uh, scriptures of encouragement for why she's going through what she's going through and um, why the spirit is going to bring hope to the, de the degenerative process of being targeted, you know, because she had people in her work talking about her, two groups talking about her, and, you know, she doesn't deserve it. But you also cannot lean on self for understanding either, or you will never come to understanding why you're going through what you're going through. You must concede yourself to die daily, and then God will abound in your life when you receive Him. Which brings us today to today. Gang stalking and the times of Jacob's trouble. Or the time of Jacob's trouble. There's so many talking points that can be had based on this world alone, the duality of um, God's bloodline of Israel returning to a spiritual forefront of power where the truth is showing its light on, and everything is coming to the surface. The falsity, the truthiness, all this, all this illusory false language group identifications, uh, apostasy of Christianity, uh, this whole one foot in the world, Hegelian dialectic back and forth, um, all this fallen um, ideology, the truth is, is showing, and by showing I mean it's proving who is real and who's not, you know things less spoken of, but nonetheless uh, just as powerful to, in understanding. Understanding that God's promises are coming back on His own, to His own. Understanding that the curses are being lifted. Understanding that the true church of Jesus Christ is being proved right now, is going through this, this trial by fire right now. Uh, where where some are entering the time of Jacob's trouble, some are uh, might be in it full throttle at this point. You know, we're awakening to, and this is important. I mean, you you know yourself against that of this world, and you know yourself um, 
because of acceptance of, of God in your life. And one, con one confirms the other. You know, you have to know yourself to this struggle. And, re and rejoice will abound, you know, and you will be afforded that protection in your life by God, by His grace, by the work that He's done. And that's why there's not enough emphasis or value being put on why your existence is so important as a, as a descendant of Jacob and a real one and a spiritual adoptee back to the root of the birthright of Jacob. Uh, they want to keep this from you. But these things are all coming to light right now because um, what you may have started off seeing in terms of signs of life have become life itself because of Jesus Christ, because the Holy Spirit has, has fully consumed your vessel right now. It's fully moving you to witness to people in real time that you would have never thought to witness to, you know? Uh, the whole false duality of this system. When you come to know yourself, in, in, and that's what I really mean, when you come to know yourself in this system, you will understand that you were only born to it. You weren't born for it. And so something else is at work. What is that cause? that's doing this to you. Well, it's God. He's showing you by way of proving you against that of the duality of this world. It's hard to take in at first, but you that and that's why I say you must purpose your 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 whole self-involvement to the spiritual war that's in, you know, at hand or you're going to be left filling the residual fallout from it and in a magnified way and you can't you, and you shouldn't avoid the spirit what the spirit is showing you what it what it has to show you what it what it's proving you through by showing you it you know most people don't get this they're not going to get it nor will they ever get it okay they are they they were born for this world and they're, they will, they're going to die with this world. The so-called church age, the, maybe even the age of grace, it's God's overriding covenant with, with those he promised certain things to for, because of the shortening of the times for the sake of his elect. That's going to outweigh and, and, and um, prolong whatever last bit of time we have left so that every last one of his chosen ones is saved because he has written the prophecy in that way. And that's comforting. That should be comforting for your life. If you can understand that, if you can grasp that, you know, and that's, that, that's what leads me to this decision. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you're a real TI, the, great, the greatest question you, one could ask, existentially speaking, I believe if you're a real TI, you're chosen based on God's promises alone. A lot of people find it hard. I don't. Because I see what it takes to make a character of God. You know. Yeah, m many are called, yet few are chosen. Yeah, there's a lot of people um, that are called. And, and God also says there, there's a few that are chosen. And I don't speak for the many that are called. I speak encouragingly, encouragingly to the few that are chosen. Because I don't understand this in any other type of existence. I don't understand it. I only understand things in certainty. In, and by certainty, I mean in spirit and truth. The, the, the equivalent supernatural nature that one cannot be left without the other undone and vice versa. Not the same thing as what, what is above is as below. Not that, none of that occult belief. But in the understanding and the, and the, the truth that Israel is one. In our Lord. And... Just as there were those who were born to the promise, there were there are those who are born 
for the sake of for the sake of others, those of the promise to receive, because they were born to be an antagonist. And I was just reading. I don't know if it was Romans about it's not our place to be hard on perps or gang stalkers because they were born to be used for God to get your attention. It's not our place to judge them. They were born for wrath because they're children of wrath. Um, When they were formed, the seeds were sown that they were to go into wrath. And and while they were alive here in this this, uh, space and time continuum, they would show themselves to be of that sowing. And then they would go back down. Okay. For the sake of his promised ones, his chosen ones. And so you got to remember that we don't really have physical enemies. The tares are only being used for the sake of his promised ones to, to be received of God's glory and his, and his prophecies. And so you must not receive this egotistically. You must understand it humbly. This is a, pl- a place of privilege. It's a place of honor. It's a place that God has promised you from a long time ago. And it's not our place to judge uh, the physical proxy. Because this is not, this is, this is the, the, the prince of the air is, is the ruler of this world. Okay, and, and our God is eternal. So our, our source for existence comes eternally. And I receive that in glad tidings. I rejoice. And I don't take it ungratefully. I take it graciously. I thank God what he did for me. By his mercy. By his grace. By his doing. By his, his handiwork. Nothing I... And you're going to come... You're Look, this question's going to come to your life one day and you're going to say, man, I've looked for all the answers and I couldn't come up with one on my own other than the fact that to to existence is what I had to go through in order for God to reveal himself to me to show me and by that once again I mean showing by proving through you Every, every hard day, every examination, every trial, every bit of suffering. Why we're not from here. We were just born to it. And we were created for so much more. And we'll be inheriting that. We'll be inheriting our our, 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 what is it, our souls as our crowns of life. I believe that's, I'm going to have to look up that scripture, but that's what it brought me to is, you know. So don't judge the enemy. The enemy is, is, is a tool that God has allowed Satan to use for the benefit of you to become part of his eternal family and not have to go Uh, the way of the world and where it's going when this world dies and so he's made a way for you I'm going to leave you guys with this be blessed today Uh, don't look back begrudgingly look forward hoping that with hope that's that's why we look forward because we're hopeful about something that that we cannot see in this life, we cannot touch, but we believe in, we have faith in. And that is in His Son, Jesus Christ. So I thank you guys once again. Till the next one. I love you guys. All right, take care. Godspeed.